The first key piece of the of the trade season landed today. Gold Coast lost control of this late in the season. They looked like they had Isaac Raynor. They feared a raid Rankin. from the Crows. Rankin, sorry, I beg your pardon. Um, and that's how it's panned out. Rankin wants to leave and he wants to take the five-year, $4 million deal at he's, the Crows. He's got to take it. He, he just has to. And people are saying, don't, you know, pressure, pressure. He's got to take it. It's a deal. Two years ago, he was playing under 18 football. If someone wants to come through with a deal like this, he's got He just has to say yes. Now, young fellow will know by now, he's playing AFL football, but he's been warned about the stresses of what's going to come in Adelaide. My... My reluctance to jump up and down with excitement about this is right now, Jared, he's not worth 800, whatever it is, 800 to 900. There's so many figures. I'll say 800, OK? He's not worth 800. He's a small forward with tricks at $800,000. Cyril Rioli is the best small forward that I've ever seen. Ever seen, and he wouldn't be anywhere near that. I know the wages have gone up. But, my God, Jerry, that's a lot of money. It's a lot of money to tie up in that position. Yeah, it? And it that is. to Jordan Dawson and the money that they've spent there. It, makes, it just makes you wonder, in the picture of a rebuild, to, to use your money in those two positions rather than explosive midfielders and key forwards, mm. it sort of it defies things. But it's, good it's, luck to them. Yeah, they're they're being rough. bold. It is rough for Gold Coast. Pick three, three years. They've nursed him through a lot. He made a good start and then had a really poor stretch where they've taught him football, I suspect, and actually they won't get any of the benefits for it. So the Crows will want to compensate them well. Yeah, they will. Be first rounder, no doubt. No, no, he's not worth two. No, no he's, he's certainly not. worth five. Pick five. Oh, he's worth... No, sorry. And he, then... He's not worth two first rounders. No. That's been blown out of water, these two first rounders. Because football always has champs coming through and you take a punt on getting the next champion. So, yeah. Anyway, good luck to him. Be a good watch. Member of the Small Forwards Union, did you want to take exception with our conversation last night around Isaac Rankin? Yeah, well, I'll, Robbo, I was yep. just going to ask the question. It wasn't even more about Isaac, but when you spoke about, like, 800, I know it's a, a lot of money, but as a small forward and good small forwards, they, they should deserve it if they're playing. But he's not, right. at, he's not at your level yet. You didn't even get 800, or did you? No, I didn't get 800. Like you, were, you to me, and Cyril... Are the best two small four and, and Stephen Mill. They're the three. They're the benchmark for me. I, I just don't think paying a 19-year-old or 20-year-old $800,000, he's not worthy of that yet, yet, Eddie. I know you have to get that money to prize him out, but he's not worthy of that money yet. Yeah, well, whether, whether or not he, he's worthy or not, you know, he could build into that player, but as for small forwards... You know, I think if they're good enough, no matter if it's Isaac or Milne, Cyril, if they're good enough, they should, you know, earn the right to, to make that amount of money. You know, there's small backs on that amount of money. There's rock, there's tall forwards, there's midfielders. There's no, 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 that's a really no, good point. That's no really small forwards point. ever. So I thought I'd better come today and throw the bat in for the small forwards mm. um, because, you know, they, 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 it's one of the hardest positions to play on the ground. And they... And you can't, I can't really see, you know, a functional forward line function without one of a, sm a good small forward. You look at Charlie Cameron up in Brisbane. I, I believe that forward line can't function without him. Where he chases, he tackles, he marks, he kicks goals, and he's the catalyst in that forward. And he's not on $800,000 either. Uh, yeah, and he should be, because he's playing great footy. So. He is, he's a great player. He's a great he's player. He's a great so. player. But this is the strange world of footy, Geordie, where you've got to pay overs to get players out. And we do pay for potential in the modern game at times for other than, you know, potential ahead of production, I suppose. It's a complicated situation, and, and especially this one. I mean, if it was a position that Adelaide so desperately needed to fill, well, then it might make a little bit of sense. But you look at the other small forwards that they've got and the young talent in Rochelle and, and McHenry and, and these types of players, to go and pay another small forward that's proven he can play one good season, um, bring him in on big money, hoping that it doesn't upset the environment that they're trying yeah. to build. It's it's complicated. I want him to succeed. I think he's a oh, terrific young player. I think, yeah, I think it'll be, yeah, going back home, you know, you could thrive, but being in Adelaide myself and, you know, going across there on, you know, a certain amount of money, the pressure that builds on you early, you so early Isaac has to come out and prove a point and play well and earn the respect of 
of the the Adelaide supporters. Did that? Because, did that? Did that affect was, you? There, no, not really. Because there was not. There was a lot of negative about me coming to Adelaide. A lot of negative comments. I didn't really read into it, but you know, it's like, why is he on that amount of money? I wasn't even. I wasn't on that much in the first place. But not compared to this. But. Uh, I, all I want to do is go out and, and prove a point and, and, and play good footy. And you certainly did it, buddy. And so, yeah, hopefully you can. can. Do that. Hopefully you can. I'm not trying to bait you here, but I remember when we first heard from you is when Tom Lynch left and you stood up as a leader of this club and you became a leader. Isaac Rankin's just announced he wants to leave the footy club. How does that make you feel? Yeah, I mean, I'll be honest, it is disappointing. I feel like... Um, for us, we felt that Isaac, we put a lot of time into him and, um, you know, for the player that he is and going to become, I feel like we had a massive hand in that in trying to create that and trying to, you know, surround him with a culture where he can thrive and, and he can relish and he's really just started to give us the goods towards the end Absolutely. there. And I'll be honest, it, it does it does hurt. It is disappointing and I understand that, but you also got to understand that I feel like football just, that's just what happens. Like, people do choose to leave. They, they do make decisions and um, we did try our best to, Try to keep him. What did as you do? In. What did you do personally? So what we had did a, the leadership group do. So we, we sat him down. We had a chat to him, um, and we, we were we? really honest. So our leadership group. So Sean Lemon, Joe Witts, David Swallow, with a, and myself with the four yeah. that went and talked to him, um, like uh, afterwards. And um, yeah, well, we literally just gave us uh, gave him our honest opinion and how we felt and what we felt like he um, where his spot was in our club and how important he was to us succeeding and um, how much of a loss it is if he doesn't play for us. And, um, yeah, you know, like I said, these things happen in football. Um, we put a lot of work into him and we wanted to see the rewards on the other side. That took you part of the game's elite. Thanks for stopping by tonight and congratulations. Appreciate it. Well done, buddy.